Chapter Five of Stories of Animal Sagacity. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Allison Hester of Athens, Georgia. Stories of Animal Sagacity by W. H. G. Kingston. Chapter Five Elephants. We have, I think, sufficient evidence to prove that elephants are more sagacious and possessed of greater reasoning power than any other animals. They seem, indeed, to have many of the feelings of human beings. In spite of their size, what activity do they exhibit? What wonderful judgment! How cautious they are in all their proceedings! How great is their love of regularity! In good order. So gentle, too, are many of them, that the youngest infant might be safely entrusted to their keeping, and yet, if insulted or annoyed by a grown-up person, the same animal might hurl him to the ground with a blow of his trunk, or crush him with his ponderous feet. I will tell you a few of the numerous stories I have heard about these wonderful creatures. The Elephant in a Well while the British troops were besieging Burtpur in India, the water in the ponds and tanks in the neighborhood becoming exhausted, it could only be obtained from deep and large wells. In this service, elephants were especially useful. One day, two of these animals, one of them large and strong, the other much smaller, came together to a well. The smaller elephant carried by his trunk a bucket, which, the larger, not having one, stole from him. The smaller animal knew he could not wrest it from the other, but he eyed him, watching for an opportunity of avenging himself. The larger elephant now approached the edge of the well, when the smaller one, rushing forward with all his might, pushed him fairly into the water. Ludicrous as was the scene, the consequences might have been disastrous. Should the huge animal not be got out, the water would be spoiled. At all events, his floundering about would make it very muddy. The elephant, however, seemed in no way disconcerted, and kept floating at his ease, enjoying the cool liquid, and exhibiting no wish to come out of it. At length, a number of fastens used in the siege were brought, and these being lowered into the well, the elephant was induced by his driver to place them under his feet. In this way, a pile was raised sufficiently high to enable him to stand upon it. But being unwilling to leave the water, he, after a time, would allow no more fastens to be lowered, and his driver had to caress him and promise him plenty of arrack as a reward to induce him to raise himself out of the water thus incited the elephant permitted more fastens to be thrown in and at length after some masonry was removed from the margin of the well he was able to step out the whole operation having occupied fourteen hours you will probably smile at the conduct of the two huge creatures it was curiously like that of human beings a big boy plays a smaller one a trick, snatches something from him. The other retaliates. An uproar is raised, and often serious inconvenience follows. These two elephants behaved just like two ill-tempered boys, and through them a whole army was doomed to suffer for many hours the pangs of thirst. Remember the golden rule. Do unto others as you would that they do unto you. End of the elephant in a well. The elephant accusing his driver of theft. The following anecdote shows the elephant's perception of what is right. A large elephant was sent a few years ago to assist in piling up timber. The officer who dispatched it Suspecting the honesty of the driver, requested the wife of a missionary, to whose house the animal was sent, to watch that he received his proper allowance of rice. After some time, the lady, suspecting that her charge was being defrauded of his rice, intimated her mistrust to the keeper, 
who, pretending such surprise at having such an imputation made against him, exclaimed in his native tongue, "'Madame, do you think I would rob my child?' The elephant, which was standing by, seemed aware of the subject of the conversation, and kept eyeing the keeper, who had on a bulky waist cloth. And no sooner had he uttered those words than the animal threw his trunk round him, and untying the waist cloth, a quantity of rice fell to the ground. End of the elephant accusing his driver of theft. The Elephant and the Tipsy Soldier Some years ago, a soldier stationed at Pondicherry formed a friendship with an elephant to whom he used to give a portion of his daily allowance of liquor. One day, the soldier, getting tipsy, and being followed by the guard, ran to hide himself behind the elephant, under whose body he was, in a few minutes, fast asleep. The guard approached to seize the delinquent, but, though the keeper assisted the soldiers, the elephant would allow no one to come near him, and kept whirling his trunk about in a way which showed that he was determined to protect his charge at all costs. What was the soldier's horror the next morning when, looking up, he found the huge animal standing over him? One step of his monstrous feet and his life would have been crushed out. If he did not then and there resolve to abjure intoxicating liquor for the future, he deserved to be less fortunate another time. As he crawled out, the elephant evidently perceived the terror he was in, and, to reassure him, caressed him gently with his truck, and signified that he might go to his quarters. The animal, now seeing his friend in safety, suffered his keeper to approach and lead him away. Gratitude prompted the elephant to protect his erring friend. How sad to think that human beings are often so less grateful to those from whom they have received benefits. End of The Elephant and the Tipsy Soldier Elephants Helping Each Other When an army marches in India, elephants are employed in carrying field pieces, leveling roads, piling up timber, fetching water, all of which, and many other occupations, they perform with a regularity which shows they understand what they are about. Formerly, indeed, they were often trained to launch ships by pushing them off the stocks with the weight of their huge bodies. Some troops, on their march, had to cross a steep and rugged hill. This could only be done by cutting away portions and laying trees to fill up the chasms. The first elephant, when conducted up to this roughly formed road, shook his head and roared piteously, evidently convinced that it was insecure. On some alteration being made, he recommenced his examination by pressing with his trunk the trees that had been thrown across. After this, he advanced with a foreleg of great caution, raising the fore part of his body so as to throw the weight on the trunk. Thus, he examined every tree and rock as he proceeded, while frequently no force could induce him to advance till some alteration he desired had been made. On his reaching the top, his delight was evident. He caressed his keepers and threw the dirt about in a playful manner. A younger elephant had to follow. The first watched his ascent with the most intense interest, making motions all the while as though he was assisting him by shouldering him up the declivity. As the latter neared the top, a difficult spot had to be passed when the first, approaching, extended his trunk to the assistance of his brother in distress. The younger, entwining his round it, was thus led up to the summit in safety. The first, on this, evinced his delight by giving a salute something like the sound of a trumpet. The two animals then greeted each other, as if they had been long separated and had just met after accomplishing a perilous achievement. They mutually embraced and stood face to face for a considerable time as if whispering congratulations. 
The driver then made them salam to the general, who ordered them five rupees each for sweet meats. On this, they immediately returned thanks by another salam. Can you, after reading this, ever refuse to help any human beings in distress? Imitate, too, that sagacious elephant, in never venturing on unsafe ground. Look before you leap. End of Elephants Helping Each Other The Elephant and the Rotten Bridge It is seldom that an elephant can be induced to pass over ground he considers unsafe. Sometimes, however, a driver obtains such a mastery over a timid animal that he compels him to undertake what his better sense would induce him to decline. An elephant of this character was owned by a person residing in the neighborhood of Gaia. Between the house and the town was a small bridge, over which the elephant had frequently passed. One day, however, he refused to go over it. He tried it with his trunk, evidently suspecting that its strength was not sufficient to bear his weight. Still, the obstinate driver urged him on with the sharp spear with which elephants are driven. At length, with cautious steps, he began the passage, still showing an extreme unwillingness to proceed. As he approached the center, loud cracks were heard when the treacherous bridge gave way, and both elephant and rider were precipitated into the stream below, the latter being killed by the fall, and the former, who had proved himself the most sensible being of the two, being much injured. Let no force induce you to do what is wrong. All bad ways are like that rotten bridge. When others attempt to goad you on to do evil, tell them the story of the elephant and the rotten bridge. End of the Elephant and the Rotten Bridge The Elephant Turned Nurse Who would expect to see a huge elephant take care of a delicate little child? Yet more vigilant and gentle nurses cannot be found than are some of these animals. The wife of a mahout, or elephant driver, was frequently in the habit of giving her baby in charge of an elephant. The child would begin, as soon as it was left to itself, to crawl about, getting sometimes under the elephant's huge legs, at others becoming entangled among the branches on which he was feeding. On such occasions, the elephant would gently disengage the child by lifting it with his trunk or removing the boughs. The elephant, it should be said, was himself chained by the leg to the stump of a tree. When the child had crawled nearly to the limits of his range, he would advance his trunk and lift it back as tenderly as possible to the spot whence it had started. Indeed, no nurse could have attended an infant with more good sense and care than did this elephant with his master's child. End of the elephant turned nurse. The Wounded Elephant and the Surgeon To conclude my anecdotes about elephants, I must tell you two which show, even more than the other incidents I have mentioned, the wonderful sense they possess. An elephant had been severely wounded, and submitting to have his wound dressed, used, after two or three times, to go alone to the hospital and extend himself, so that the surgeon could easily reach the injured part. Though the pain the animal suffered was so severe that he often uttered the most plaintive groans, he never interrupted the operation, but exhibited every token of submission to the surgeon, till his cure was effected. Still more curious is the following. A young elephant, which had accompanied its mother to the battlefield, received a severe wound in the head. Nothing could induce it to allow the injury to be attended to. At length, by certain signs and words, the keeper explained to the mother what was wanted. The sagacious animal immediately seized the young one with her trunk, and, though it groaned with agony, held it to the ground, while the surgeon was thus enabled to dress the wound. Day after day she continued to act in the same way, till the wound was perfectly healed. 
End of the Wounded Elephant and the Surgeon End of Chapter 5 of Stories of Animal Sagacity